Hi, my name is Rachel J.C. Bellamy, and I am the founder of Queenpreneur.com, where we provide a community for sovereign women entrepreneurs, and I'm also the Queen Executive Officer of Rain LLC. We are a small business design, innovation, and growth firm, and I get the fortunate privilege of working with entrepreneurs and executives and small business owners to develop sustainable and profitable businesses. Now, I am really excited um, to give today's blog on the Naked Faith blog series because first of all, I just admire Lisa Barnes. She has been a staple in our community and a leader and a trailblazer. And so first my hat, my crown is off to you. But I'm also excited because it's an opportunity to, for us to have a real conversation about our faith, fellowship, and fortune. So my message today <laughs> is called Be the Light. All right, so what do I mean by that? Let me back into it. So a little bit about my story and who I am, and then I'm gonna tell you the principle for today. Okay, so I am a graduate of West Point Military Academy. I know, right? There aren't a lot of um, um, brown girls <laughs> who graduated from West Point Military Academy, but nevertheless, um, I learned a lot about leadership and a lot about um, fellowship and a lot about my faith. <laughs> Yeah, a lot about my faith while I was there because you learned um, that if you trust and if you believe, you can really achieve anything you put your mind to. So, nevertheless, so my point about today in our discussion is I want to talk to you about this, uh, and I know a lot of us don't talk about this, but we think it sometimes, um, how do we mix and integrate our faith with our, our business right and how do we get that integration of, of being of service and of also standing in our in our spiritual walk and playing full out in that space and so i'm going to tell you about my journey really quick <laughs> and um i'm gonna tell you about a, a point in my life that happened and everything shifted okay so i was um i was in seminary enrolled full-time getting my uh, master's of divinity from regent university and i um decided to take a, uh, to take, I think it was a year, I took a year off. I didn't really take it off, but I then also enrolled in Georgetown's leadership coaching um, program, which is a master's level program. So I, in essence, I was enrolled in two programs at one time. Nevertheless, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of crazy. <laughs> Nevertheless, I was in my Georgetown program and I was, um, I was, I was going through this process of, okay, how do I show up here? Because in seminary, I play full out and I'm full of faith and I know I'm called to pastor leaders. And now, now I'm in this program about leadership coaching, but I'm, I'm in the marketplace. And so it was that battle. Which side of the fence do I dance on and how do I show up? And I know that all of us at some point will ask that question. The question that we have to ask ourselves is who will I be in the world? And... And sometimes we wonder, okay, well, do I lead with the fact that I'm a Christian or was it something they're going to find out eventually, right? So so I'm trying to get you there, right? And it's not that you are trying to compromise your faith. Um, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a decision point we all have to go. How will I present myself to the world? Will I... Um, Will I wear a big stamp on my forehead that says I'm a Christian and, and will we stand um, or will we uh, kind of exude it and then people will come close enough and realize something is different about us, right? And so I was at Georgetown and I remember I was, um, it's a very prestigious program um, and, and, and hard to get into. And I was in this program and I didn't want to, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I don't want to be one of those offensive Christians, you know, the, the Christians that stand in judgment of everybody else. You know, if you don't believe what I believe, then I can't talk to you or associate with you and you're just wrong and evil. And I didn't want to come across as that. And so I remember um, almost pulling back some. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't change my message. I didn't deny it. I was very clear about everybody. I'm called to be a pastor and, you know, and everybody loved that. But for some reason, there was something in me that felt like I needed to shelter them because I didn't want to come across as the pushy, aggressive Christian. I wanted to be more of the inviting Christian, right? And so I remember thinking about this and, and we had to write these declaration statements. And so we were going to stand in front of the class and declare who we were to the class. And I was um, at work and I had taken my lunch break and I was walking 
um, and it was like a spring day, but it was overcast. And the light had broke through the clouds as I was walking. And I noticed over, um, while I was walking, I was along my path to the left, there were these tulips. And these tulips had were doing all they could to lean into the light, right? And it was at that moment that I realized that I had to be who I am. I had to be the light because the world needs the light. You know, those tulips were doing everything in their power to position themselves to just get a little bit of the light. And, and while I was in seminary, I remember thinking, oh, okay, well, if I'm going to pursue my seminary path and be a pastor, that means I need to be in a church. And so what do I do about my favor that I, that I have in the marketplace and my desire to help people grow businesses? How do I, ah, you get me? And I remember a knowing in a conversation I had in prayer and the prayer call, conversation sounded like this. If all of the light goes to the lighthouse, i.e. the church, and hangs out in the church, then the rest of the world remains in darkness. But if a couple of those lights have the courage to come out and live amongst the darkness, the darkness no longer remains darkness. And in that moment, those two things together reminded me that, that there are a group of us who are called to be in the marketplace and to be beacons of light in a dark world. And that people, if we will have the courage to be the light and to stand in who we are and stand in our faith and stand in love, hope, and faith, right? That like those tulips, the people around us will do everything they can to be in our presence because that light gives them energy. It supplies them with hope. And in this society and in this time, people need hope. So, okay. So our takeaway, our action step for today, and our lesson is called Be the Light. And I made a little formula. It's called the EIV3 formula. So I have three, I have three, I guess I have nine words, <laughs> but there's a principle for, there's three principles and I have, just play along, okay? <laughs> All right, so the EIV3 Be the Light formula is this. The first one is excellence, integrity, and virtue. Excellence, integrity, and virtue. That's E-I-V. Excellence, in integrity, and virtue. Now, what do I mean by that? As Christians and as people of faith, we should do everything in excellence, in integrity, and according to our virtues, okay? The second E-I-V is expertise, illumination, and value. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is rather than um, uh, let your fruit speak for you. That's what I mean. So do everything, become the expert at what you've been gifted at and the value that you add to the marketplace and be willing to be um, the illuminary in that space. Be willing to be the expert, stand out, make a difference, add extreme value. And the third one is execution, implementation, and victory. And by that, I mean it is so important that we, do, we don't just talk a good game, but that we execute. Let your fruit, let your results be what people are attracted to. And be willing to do everything that's necessary to implement. And don't stop until you achieve victory. So my Be The Light formula, my EIV3 formula is excellence, integrity, and virtue. My second one is expertise, illumination, and value. And the third one is execution, implementation, and victory. So remember, when you see this light bulb or a light bulb, remember EIV3, be the light. Be willing to be the light. And the scripture I would reference is Ephesians 5 and 8. So faith-centered solopreneurs, coaches, speakers, authors, and consultants, I would just encourage you to be the light. Be willing to stand out and be the light. The darkness needs you. And so this is Rachel J.C. Bellamy of queenpreneur.com, and it has been a pleasure, and I wish you much success and courage to be the light. And remember, E-I-V times three. Bye-bye.